Hey guys, welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today we're going to be installing a hydraulic e-brake because they are awesome for drifting. And that's not the sole reason we're installing it. When I first got this car, I changed all the brakes on it. I bought new parking brake shoes. This does have shoes to the parking brake. It's not just the caliper. So it's got a rotor that is also a drum. So I put the new shoes on and I just couldn't seem to get the rotor to fit over the shoes no matter what. It just seemed like it was, the rotor was either too small or the pads were too big or whatever. And I even had the high guy come over who's a certified technician who does this daily. And he tried to help me out. He couldn't even do it. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to delete them. I hate shoes. I hate dealing with them. I hate the springs. I hate the clips. I hate everything about them. I don't care if they have more initial bite. I freaking hate them. So I deleted them, cut the cables. And the only cable left on the car is the one coming into the car for the handbrake. So I was like, you know what? I kind of have to have a parking brake of, of some sort. So I'm going to go with a hydraulic one that is much simpler and cooler and even works better. So today is finally the day we're going to be installing this. And there's a few things that you need. We have a ton of stuff, but we'd rather have more than enough than not enough. So what we have today is obviously a hydraulic e-brake by K-Sport. Um, it's got a little thing here for the parking brake lever. So you just put it in park. And a few things you're going to need for this. Um, you don't have to buy a spool of brake line, but you did. It's probably going to be the easiest way to do it. Buy an entire spool instead of a bunch of these lines. But the reason we had to buy lines and a spool is because the fittings on this are standard, American. Fittings on the car are metric. Our local auto parts store didn't have a standard to metric conversion line so what we had to do was buy a metric line and we're going to have to cut this off and put the fittings on here and we also have some standard fittings we're going to make it all fit it took us a little while to figure out figure out exactly what we have to do but along with brake line you're going to need probably a bunch of these unions which are going to come in handy by putting the brake lines together if you don't have these you can't put the brake line together we have a flaring tool we had a video on how to flare brake line. Mark did it. Uh, we've never done it before, so hopefully we can do it as good as Mark. And then finally, we have this kit which has a brake line bender in it, which allows you to bend the brake line easily without kinking it, which is also pretty good because if you kink the line, it kind of doesn't flow well, or it could snap, break, crack, whatever, and look. So, now that I'm done rambling on about telling you what it, all you need and what you need to do, I think it's time to get started on this thing and finally get this car inspected. Alright, so when you're doing something like this, you want to come up with a plan of attack first. You don't just want to dive headfirst in and just go in with it. Sure, we may do that sometimes, but this is kind of different. You gotta look at the master cylinder. You gotta find out which one is the front line and which one is the rear line. This line right here is the rear line and it comes to this valve or whatever it is and splits off and runs across the car to the ABS module and then back and down the car. So when we installed this engine, we kind of bypassed like all the ABS stuff so it doesn't have ABS so that module over there is effectively useless. So what we're planning on doing is just running, keeping this stock line that goes from the master cylinder to this, whatever it is, this valve right here, we're gonna keep that. But instead of running a line across to the ABS module and then back, we're just gonna run right from this down the car and hopefully we can get it above the transmission and then into the cab into the brake. We're gonna be running these lines, we're gonna try to run these lines right through the hole where the parking brake cable came in so we don't put any extra holes in it. We may have to, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. And then, once we get it hooked up to the parking brake, it's a straight shot back to the T or portioning valve, whatever you want to call it, to the rear lines. So this is only one line we're running. So hopefully it's pretty simple. Um, it looks pretty straightforward. Um, the only difficult part, like doing an intercooler kit, is just finding out exactly where you're going to run it. The actual hooking everything up is really simple. So, we're not going to disconnect the stuff First, um, what we're going to do, we're going to probably mount the brake in the car first, or at least get it semi-mounted, and then run the lines from there, because 
we don't want to be working around all this brake fluid and everything, so we're just going to run the lines. And once we get it to exactly where we want it, then we're just going to simply undo these unions, put the new ones on. All right, so just like with the brake lines, when you put your parking brake in, you want to plan out where exactly, where exactly you're going to put it first. The factory parking brake was much thinner, and it was right here. So we're thinking, hmm, where can we put it? This glove box is kind of in the way, so what we did, we cut it. And uh, we're thinking about mounting it right in this area. Thinking, mounting it right about there. Now we also are planning on moving this back a few inches, but with it mounted right here, it's out of the way of everything. I can drive the car, it's not in the way of the gears, I can do the mirrors, still have the mirror switch, we can do the radio, and I can yank on it, right here. If it were straight, it'd be in the way of the gear shift. Um, this would have to be moved back further. And we could put it in this direction, but I don't think it feels as natural pulling it this way. I think for me, it feels more natural me pulling it that way. Um, it's just personal preference, you may want it that way. And we just cut this with an angle grinder. Um, it was extremely precise, and we just zipped it off really quick. So we're going to move this back a few inches. Um, we're going to have Mark weld this, but I think for the meantime, we may just put a rivet in it or something. But it's going to be mounted right here. And I think it'll be perfect. And once we get it mounted, we're going to take out this parking brake cable and run the lines through it. All right, so since we cut the front half off, it's only two Phillips head screws to take this off, one here, one on the other side. So right now we're just gonna move this out of the way um, just to get, just to give us more room. There we go, out of the way. And this is the hole we're thinking about running the brake lines in from, right here. All right, so this isn't the preferred method to remove this cable. Underneath the car, there are a couple bullets that hold brackets on that hold this on. Um, to do that, we have to drop the exhaust and the drive shaft. We're going to eventually upgrade to a drive shaft, so I think what we're going to do today is just grind this off right here, and then when we upgrade the drive shaft, then we'll take care of it. It's not that big of a deal, and uh, we always like to put on a little fireworks show. So. Wasn't that bad, was it? No. That's all we gotta do. Alright, so now that we got the cable out and the center console out, we can get a better picture of what this is gonna look like. Like we said before, the handle, let me just get this out of the way. The handle is gonna go right here. That's why we have this black line here, because we marked that previously. And then the brake lines are hopefully gonna run through this hole should be pretty easy and then we're gonna move the center console back a few inches so the lines go right under it and I'll be right here and that'll look pretty awesome and actually we've been blessed there's actually a bolt hole right there there's a bolt hole right there and we actually instead of riveting it in to pass inspection we can just put one bolt in there and it'll be good this is awesome less work for us then Mark can weld it and that's on his watch not ours so it's gonna be right there Drive it. So, uh. <laughs> and he's gonna move around just like that. He's gonna move just like that. He's gonna. <laughs> Ejecto <-cito. laughs> So, uh, what we're gonna do first, I think, is with wire, get a measurement, approximate measurement, of how far it's going to be from this line here to up front. Believe it or not. The back line is the in, the front line is the out. It's backwards, makes no sense, I know. But if you put your finger on here and you pull the handle, you feel air pressure come out of here, and you'll feel it suck in that. So, uh, yeah, out. So, we're gonna have the in line come out here, boop, up the tunnel, up through there, and into that little valve thingy, and then, uh, it's just a straight shot back. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Alright, so from down here we can see the, the hole right up there 
that goes into the cabin where the parking brake cable ran. So what we're gonna do, our first thing is we're gonna have to take this cover off. This is where the fuel lines and the rear brake line runs. We're gonna run our brake line. Well, first we're gonna get a, a uh, wire and just get an approximate measurement of how long. We're gonna run the cable down here and then run it along here and then up to that valve that I showed you earlier. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the rear line, just run it straight down here. And we're gonna attempt to flare into the existing brake line That'll save us a bit of money, but it is an 88, <laughs> um, so it may be really rusty. And if that's the case, we're gonna replace it. But to try to save time, because this is poor, or time and money, this is poor man mods. So we're gonna try to flare it. And if it doesn't, we're just gonna replace it. So right now, we're gonna end up taking this cover off and then run the wire. All right, here comes all the dirt. That wasn't that bad. What the? <laughs> All right. So there we go. There is our rear brake line. It actually looks pretty good. So we might be able to flare into it. Nice. You ready? Oh yeah. You ready? Yeah. Oh, you ready for this? So Mike went ahead and uh, tied the uh, this wire to the handbrake inside, ran it down the tunnel along with the brake lines and it ended up here. So honestly, we're probably gonna make brake lines as long as this wire is. That way we have a little more left, left to work with. But overall, that's the idea. And uh, we'll see if we can execute it perfectly. All right, so before we get the lines hooked up, we're gonna secure this with just one of the bolts just so it doesn't move and it makes it easier for when we try to hook everything up. So we got this bolt. What we're gonna do here is stick it on this here socket. And we had to take this pin off so the extension can get down in there. Stick it through. And then we gotta line it up. <laughs> this is exactly what it's gonna be doing. <laughs> All right, so when we ran our wire from the parking brake up into that little valve thing, we got right around nine feet. Cut the wire to length, this is nine feet. And then we took the spool and we added maybe like six inches onto it just in case we had to cut any. We'd rather have more than enough than not enough. So we got nine feet and we flared this end. This is the end going into the parking brake. So we had to put an American 316 fitting on it. That end will be a Japanese. And we didn't show you how to flare this because we had made another video on it. So if you want to know how to flare a brake line, click right here, there'll be a video for that. So now we just gotta get this in the car and hook it up. All right, so we got this nine foot piece of brake line and we're gonna put this end up through the hole that goes into the parking brake. Oh uh, yeah. So we just gotta show that up in there. And just like that. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna hook it up to the brake. And then once it's all secure, we're gonna get it and route it right up in there. Like up in there, nice and deep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we have to put the brake line onto the parking brake. This is a brake line bender. Hopefully we can put the right angle on it without screwing it up. So what you do is take this and you bend it, bend it, bend it like that. We're gonna have to put like a 90 or 180 or something on it. Something like, something like that. Might have to be a little bit more extreme with it. No, I'm saying. No. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what you're saying at all. There will be subtitles in this video. Okay. So what we did, now we got it on. And now we need to uh, tighten it with a wrench. And then uh, you know, we gotta shove this down a little bit more. But this is basically it. And uh, this is gonna go like that. What do you think? Right in the way, isn't it? I love it. All right, so you can see all the kinks that we had to make in this line. We had to do that just to make it short enough so we could actually put it up through here. Um, we're gonna fix them later, but now we have to feed this line up to genre run Yo. in Yo, the end up here. I got this. Yo, he got it. Take it slowly. Uh, stop it. 
we're just gonna try to roughly get this to where we want it. That's good for right now. So we ran this line all the way up here. We uh, used our brake line bender to put some kinks in it. Not actual kinks, but some bends. And now we're gonna put it in this T. We removed the factory brake line right here, which goes over to the ABS module and back. And we're saying fuck you to the ABS module. And time to thread this thing in. All right, so we're ready to put the rear brake line on. And just like the first brake line, we use this wire to see how much line we actually need. This end is going into the fitting right here, and then this line is going to go where we're going to try to splice in to the existing brake line. It looks to be about four and a half feet. So we're going to cut the brake line to this length, flare one end and put a fitting on it, run it through, and then throw the other end down there, and hopefully it works out. Hopefully we get this thing hooked up. All right, guys, so we got, we're using a copper line for this one. Uh, we just had it laying around. It's easier to bend. Um, it's, we just decided to use it. You don't have to. But anyway, we got the length to where we think we need it, and now we're threading this into the master cylinder. So now we just gotta tighten it down, and then as soon as this is tightened, we just gotta hook this up to the rear brake line and see if this baby works. And uh, hopefully it doesn't leak, because I really don't feel like fixing a leak, and we've been working on this all day, and I just really don't feel like working on it anymore. I just want it to be over. I don't even know if I'm tightening it. Am I tightening it? I'm not even looking. I don't think you are. Good. Stay tuned, and maybe we will finish this project. All right, so this is the copper line we ran down here. It was a little too long for our liking, and instead of cutting it and flaring it, we just put a coil in here. Won't affect anything, it just looks ugly. And this right here is the rear brake line, so we're going to cut into it with this pipe line cutter. And uh, it's probably going to leak brake fluid all over us, which is going to suck. But uh, once we cut this in, cut into it. Oh my god, that makes a lot of noise. We cut into it and then flare it and put a fitting on it and then put a union on it and it should be done and ready to bleed. <sighs> Alright, so we cut this brake line with the, with the tube cutter and now we have a fitting on it. Make sure before you flare things, <laughs> you put the fitting on it because in the, <laughs> the flaring video that Mark did, he did the same thing, and I just did the same thing. <laughs> so make sure you put the freaking fitting on there, because I had a really nice flare, and there was no fitting. <laughs> so now I have to redo it, and I'm gonna redo it, and it's probably not gonna, gonna turn out as well. And make sure when you tighten it, don't tighten it too much, or else you'll break the nipple off the adapter. I've done that twice. Oh. Once you see the, the fitting get like, flush with the plate there, stop. Because if it's a little bit crooked and you keep on tightening, you'll break the adapter. Mm-hmm. All right, so we got this fitting on. I actually got it on this time. I flared it. Got this brake line down here. Final piece of the puzzle is this thing right here. It's called a union. It unions two pieces of line together. It's really difficult, let me show you how you do it. You take it and you thread it onto this one. Oh wow, look at that. And you take this brake line, you thread it into there. Oh wow, look at that. Now it's complete. Now it needs to be bled, and then we get to go do some skids or something. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try and see if this parking brake works. Ready? Oh shit. Well, there you go, I guess it works. Uh, now I gotta practice my drifting. Peace.